some good news and some bad. The bad news is that I'm in quarantine. But don't worry, I had my shots and I feel just fine. But the good news is that I'm in quarantine! Which means for the next 10 days I will finally have some time to work on some projects. Which is perfect timing, as in a couple of weeks we're going on a trip and I have just the idea what to make for it. So a couple of years ago when I was going on this budget backpacking trip, I came up with an idea for a dress that can function as three different outfits. And today I will be revisiting that idea using this bustier pattern from Etsy for the top. This one. Right here. So if you're also someone who stuffs their bag to the brim, so along with me and the next time you go on a trip, you can pack one dress instead of three. normal people use some scab fabric to make a mock-up? I was looking for my stash and I found this beautiful stripy material that was left over some project I did a long time ago and I kind of made a top out of it <laughs> which is super cute but it doesn't exactly fit me <laughs> but now I know that I think I will use one size smaller from this pattern and I think I'm gonna add a couple of inches to the bottom of it because I want the top to tuck into the skirt when it's worn together so it reads more like a dress. After I modified my pattern, I started cutting out all the pieces required, both from the fashion fabric and the lining. flatlined all the pieces with their correspondent lining as this fabric is as see-through as it is itchy <laughs> thanks to the metallic thread. I started assembling the top, first sewing the side seams together Then assembling the cups from the three pieces provided. I also top stitched every single seam as I was working on the garment as it provided some more structure to it and I also kind of liked how it looked. Once it started to look like a garment, I added the zipper and tried it on to see the fit. Other than some minor alterations, everything looked more or less fine, so I marked the length I wanted. I finished the lower edge with a bias tape that I flipped back and had sewed down carefully, only catching the lining. Now 
that the bodice part was ready, I could finally concentrate on figuring out the sleeves. My first idea was to make short and sweet puffy sleeves, so I made a pattern and a mock-up to check the design. On the other side, I just folded up a piece of fabric into a white strap, and looking at them side by side, I actually preferred the strap. So I measured its width and made two straps in its likeness. straps to their rightful places and cover the tracks with some facing that I top stitched down as well. So I chose the flat line as bodice because I hate seeing the seam allowance through a sheer fabric, which would normally be fine, but trying it on, it was still very itchy thanks to the metallic thread. So I had two options. One, I could uh, line it again, which wouldn't be ideal as this was supposed to be a light summer top and it was already getting quite thick. Or I could tape all the seams, which is what I did, sewing a bias tape to the lining by hand. And the top is ready. Now I can start making the skirt. So I started making the skirt, which was supposed to be the easiest thing to do in this whole project. And I managed to mess it up in more than one ways. <laughs> First of all, I managed to cut it the wrong way around. So basically I wanted to, these little flowers to be pointing upwards so it matches the bodice. But of course I cut the wrong side off. Then I was like, okay, well, what can I do? I cut the wrong side off, these flowers will be pointing downwards. So I started gathering the top of it and the first gather is already done. And I was just trying it on to see how it will look when I realized that last night I already started cutting the skirt the right way around, meaning there's already a large chunk of it missing. <laughs> so I ran back to the shop trying to find this fabric again, but I bought it in this and sale shop where they usually run out of stock quite quickly and of course no one had it anymore so i have to figure out something now i have a couple of ideas how to fix it i can either just sew this piece back on and hide the sewing line with like a ribbon or some trim or i can just cut the thing and I have a really short skirt which I don't want, no. Or I can try and figure out how to make a ruffle skirt out of it. Although the ruffles will be quite small, which I don't like. I usually like the ruffles to be quite big. So yeah, that is something to think about. <laughs> At the end, I decided on the ruffles. So I cut strips for it and searched all the row edges I could find. <laughs> I did a line of stitching on the strips and gathered them into ruffles by pulling on the bobbin thread. Then I attached them to the lower edge of the main skirt panel, which I also gathered using four lines of stitching this time. Originally I wanted to English smock this part, but I didn't have the time, neither the amount of fabric required to make this. But I had this idea of ironing the gathers flat, which I think gave the right vibe. I attached the waistband right sides together and ironed in some interfacing to strengthen it. Then I realized that I still need to make an underskirt before closing the waistband. I used the same cotton as for the flat lining and made a simple half circle skirt that's quite a bit shorter than the main one to make it more hot weather friendly. I searched and hemmed its lower edge and attached it to the waistband so I could finally fold it back and tack it down by hand. We're nearing the end now, because all there was left to do was putting in the closures. I searched the side opening and attached the zipper. I had this lonely gold button in my stash that must have been waiting for exactly this project, because it fits so perfectly with it.
And now I am ready for my trip. <laughs>